As you know, I love to read. I'm a great reader, and I've got many, many books. Uh, some books you can't see, but they're down on the shelf down the bottom there. But my main little study, if you like, where I often do my other monologues, is uh, downstairs surrounded by various books. And people are very kind. They send me books. And somebody sent me this book the other day called Village News by Tom Fort. It's a very interesting book. Um, he wrote the book about the A303, which is that road that... Uh, that goes along down past Stonehenge and into various different counties in the southwest of England. And uh, we whiz along it if you're going that way and probably barely look out of the window, apart from when you come along towards the Salisbury Plain and there you see, of course, Stonehenge. But there's many interesting little anomalies along the route and bits of history and things on this very ancient route. Well, this is a similar sort of book talking about villages and um, it's fascinating looking about that, the truth about um, England's rural idyll. And it got me thinking because there's a chapter, actually there's a chapter in it I was reading only this morning. And I thought I would bring this to your attention. Uh, the Curse of the Quaint is the name of the chapter. And that sort of sums it up. If you've got a lovely, beautiful and lovely quaint village or areas of Britain, let's say, that is beautiful and wonderful and, and quaint, as the Americans like to say, hey, ain't it quaint? Um, the problem is then that it becomes a bit of a tourist trap, isn't it? Because what it's saying is, here is something lovely and beautiful, let's all pounce on it and have a look and take pictures. And one of the places it mentions in there is this particular row of uh, cottages, old cottages in the Cotswolds, Arlington Row. And this is on the Wikipedia site, and uh, we can scroll through here, and you can see all these beautiful, lovely cottages next to um, a mill pond, um, beautiful cobbled bridges and beautiful countryside. You can't see the full effect there. At Bibbury, let's see if we can get a, a good picture there of these. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? Isn't that lovely? Isn't that sensational? Cotswolds, Bibbury, Arlington Row... Um, and there, there it is. And there is many, many more photographs that we could uh, look at to, to have a look at that. Here's another one just showing these sort of weird and wonderful. But each of these um, buildings were built by craftsmen, you know, back in the day, back in the day when people could actually do things individually on their own. And they had those skills and they built them by hand with very little uh, uh, tools of modern tools that we have. Here's another version of it. Um, and they look beautiful, don't they? What a lovely place. And there's the old mill race. Now, we, we're aware, of course, that there are a lot of places like this up and down the countryside, beautiful places. I mean, I've been to Shrewsbury or Shrewsbury, depending on how you want to pronounce it. And there's some wonderful um, timber framed, uh, Elizabethan timber framed houses there. And there's also some Georgian timber frame houses and there's lots of this and this is sort of very iconic England is it not and because it's quaint if you like because it's beautiful because it's wonderful people do want to come along and they want to have a look at it and take pictures of it particularly people from across the other side of the world you get a lot of Chinese people taking their pictures of these things because it's unusual and it sort of defines what this country is mm. And you think, yeah, that's lovely, isn't it? But actually, when you walk down into the road, into the streets and have a look round and you look around at modern England now, and this is, seems to be happening all over the place, it's very different. Those sort of places that people actually want to go to that would get in their car and drive or get on a bus or a train and go and visit and, and bring prosperity to that town are slowly be getting dumbed down like everything else in this world. Uh, where I am in the 1960s, we had a, a rather interesting town hall. It used to house the old fire truck inside and there was the big ladder and, and all of that. It was a lovely building. But in the 60s, in the 1960s, across all of England, there was a huge sort of, we've got to modernise. But the modernisation didn't really improve anything. It just took away some lovely old iconic buildings, raised them to the ground and put up in its place inferior looking buildings. And this process seems to be going on. I live in a seaside town and in the old days, this seaside town, Victorian, Edwardian and even Art Deco type of seaside town with the pier was lovely. You could come down, it had a certain feeling about it. Now, the buildings that are going up in this seaside town, when they're knocking these older buildings down, are ones that you would probably not be too surprised to find in an inner city area. Uh, some sort of 
load of glass or uh, steel and glass seems to be the thing. And in fact, if you've got the money, you can buy, instead of buying beautiful, old, nostalgic, wonderful, crafted buildings that have character, you can, of course, instead buy something uh, like this. Here we go. These are the sort of things, if you've got a lot of money... Uh, now, you may be very much appealed to some of these sort of things. I mean, look at that. To me, these are ugly, ugly, utilitarian, uh, quite, quite honestly, quite freakish uh, type of houses. It's not the sort of place that I would love to live. Uh, but you, you may well, you may well like it. Look at, look at all this. I mean, this is this is the modern type of horrible-looking things. It does seem to me, if the wind blew, they'd all just fall down like a house of cards. Very angular. You notice how angular they are, uh, and very, in a way, utilitarian and bland. And they're they're like children's playhouses rather than actually something with character. Uh, but that is the, the modern house. And if you don't have that kind of money, which, let's face it, most of us don't, then maybe you'll end up in one of these. These sort of houses. Again, look at these houses here. Um, all on what, what I would think of is a bit like, um, well, in the war, you put prisoners into a sort of camp like this, didn't you? You bung them in in very identical houses. They try to make them look nice and rural, don't they? Here's, a, here's one that's uh, supposedly rural. But just look at those houses uh, waiting for it to come up. Here we go. I think they're ugly. They're mean. Oh, hello. We've got uh, the old, uh, uh, got to do the whatever you call it. I can't remember what you call them now. The cookies and all of that sort of nonsense. Let's get rid of that. Um, what else have we got? You know, they give you these idyllic pictures of what it's all going to look like. If we can get that to come up. There it is. A sort of, oh, isn't that going to be nice? But no. Um, it never quite looks like that. In actual fact, these new builds start to just look very stark. Again, very utilitarian and very... Look at these mean windows in them. These horrible mean... If, I can, if it will come up. Sorry about the delay. I should have prepared this a bit better. Uh, the mean windows in some of these houses. I wanted to do this live so you could see. Now, you may live in these and you may say, Richard, they're not that bad. They're not that bad. What else? You know, the other type of houses, the the beautiful Tudor houses that you're talking about are too expensive. Um, but these new builds, to me, this is part of the 15 minute city. They want to keep you contained into in an area that is very much Every house looks identical. Little patch of garden, barely anywhere to park, mean little windows. Uh, the architecture, architecture is something that should uplift you, should inspire you, should make you good to be alive. I believe that these new builds that are building everywhere on great swathes of wonderful farmland, which should be farmed for our food, all of these sort of little boxes, these ticky-tacky boxes that are being put up everywhere is there to keep us down. Now, sadly, now you can argue against this, of course, and you're very welcome to have a difference of opinion, but younger people will have been brought up seeing all of this sort of modernisation and think this is the norm. Certain people of a certain age who've been, have got one foot in the old analogue way, who've seen much more of these more older style buildings which may have had a few problems because they're getting older I, I admit with that with damp and things like that but it's the style it's the size it's the the bigger windows the larger gardens the uh, the space and also the design the design of some of these houses the older houses that made you feel uh, more open independent um, giving you a positive feeling I think that some of these sort of little tiny houses where you're being forced into ever smaller 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 having to buy smaller furniture being cramped in mean little windows flimsy doors flimsy roofs flimsy walls uh, and you're paying extortion amounts for them and you're thinking but that's a house isn't it that's what houses are like no we used to have houses that would last. The house I'm in is a Victorian terrace. OK, at one point this was, I admit, completely the uh, farmland that has been built on. The house is being built substantially, built in, uh, in 1875, and it's still standing with very little maintenance required on it, not flimsy at all. 
But um, I admit that it's now paving slabs outside, concrete, street lights, uh, 5G going up left, right and centre, busy cars, roads, all that kind of stuff, barely any garden, uh, supermarket, garages, all this sort of stuff, busy road, you know, noise, noise, noise. I, I understand, of course, that there's a lot of people in this country and we've got to put people into places. But can we not build more beautiful places? Can we not make places that people actually enjoy and want to live in rather than shoving them in boxes which seem very small, flimsy and transitory, more like the sort of prison camps that you see in the old days? Boxes, more like sort of Nissen huts than actual homes. Be interested in your thoughts on this. Maybe I've got it completely wrong and you, you're very welcome to disagree with me. Perhaps you live in one of these houses. Perhaps they are affordable. Perhaps you're very happy with the flimsy walls and the flimsy doors. Perhaps you're happy. With, somebody was telling me that they, they're now building fences so tall you can't even see your neighbours. In the old days, people used to like being able to sort of talk to their neighbour over the village hall and say, could I borrow the garden shears or can I, you know, borrow your lawnmower and that sort of thing. Now people seem to be in hemmed in these tiny little gardens. I've seen some people even put, instead of using real grass, they're putting down that artificial grass so they don't even have to trim it. And you just think, my goodness, what is the world coming to with all this artificial, plastic, synthetic stuff that's off-gassing and not giving you any connection to this planet? Be interested in your thoughts. Do let me know. What kind of house would you like to live in?